TV time. So sister-in-law's TV went tits up. Yeah, so I borrowed a one of mine out the garage. So I thought I'd have a quick look at it. A common fault with these screens, any LCD screen really, is uh, the power button. Sometimes you'll get them where they'll switch off themselves or you've got power to it and you see the LED come on but it won't switch on. And normally all it's down to is one of the capacitors which uh, these are your capacitors here or uh, resistors. Um, and what you're looking for on the top, see how they scored on the top? And what you do is you look at the top of these yeah, and they've got these crisscross in to make it a weak point and what happens when the capacitor goes bad yeah it heats up and it expands and what it does is pushes the top of the capacitor up and that's when you can tell you've got a bad capacitor so looking at this there is actually one on there this green one on the main circuit board that is definitely see how that's raised up compared to the one behind where it's nice and flat yeah so it's actually flexed that one yeah, so that and you can actually see it's got a little bit of brown on the top. So a bit of leakage there. So that capacitor's bad. So that'll be the problem. Yeah, that's why the telly lights up, or the, the LED does, to say it's got power, but it won't actually switch on. I mean, it may not be the problem, but, you know, as my limited knowledge on electronics, yeah, that's certainly one to look out for on any PCB board. Yeah, look for... So all you need to do is take out all the electrical connections. Uh, you unscrew on wherever the circuit board is secured to. Spin it upside down. There'll be two soldering connections on the bottom where it's soldered to the PCB. You just put your soldering iron on them to release it. Thing is with these though, they've got a plus and a minus side. So you've got to make sure that you connect it back and solder it back to the plus and minus side of the PCB. Otherwise you'll have obviously problems. Um, so you just go online and you order whatever resistor or capacitor you need. So you just look at the side and look at the spec uh, in milliamps uh, and voltage. Uh, and you know, you take it from there. I wouldn't recommend anybody does it with no knowledge at all on electrics, but you know, it's not that difficult as long as you've isolated the power, unplugged it, take the back off, look for your resistor. Uh, replace the duff one make sure you get positive and negative the right way it's marked on the circuit board which is plus and minus solder it back on make sure your solders haven't come into contact or shorten out under a, a, a negative and vice versa right so I took said um, circuit board off yeah five screws just unclip the wires so this was the uh, this is the faulty capacitor if you like uh, which was in the circuit board there so all you do is tip it over now we've just got to find where the prongs st are sticking out uh, to take the solder off uh, sometimes it's a good idea when there's a lot like this to get a red pen and just find one have a look make sure you've got it and just uh, dab it uh, with a marker so then when you come to actually get your solder line etc you know which one you're uh, you're unsoldering and that's it the, these the prongs when you, when you get a new capacitor or resistor the, the prongs are really long so all you do is you heat that prong up uh, so you don't touch solder on other parts that you don't want to unsolder once that prong heats up it'll start to melt the solder at the bottom of the store, so, circuit board and all you do is keep on putting pressure to pull this out and you'll just feel it give heat both pins up and then the capacitor will just pop out so as I say it's important you look at which is positive and minus now you can see on the circuit board it actually tells you which is plus and minus well it tells you which is plus anyway I'll focus in there the camera on my phone's crap as you know but there's the plus so on the capacitor that is the minus sign where you've got the arrow chevrons and that square box in the middle is representing the minus so that's the negative so that's all you'd put in to Tinderweb, eBay, and you'll get them for, a, you know, probably you'll get a pack for about two quid or something. Um, as you can see, it, you can see it's um, um, sort of not imploded, exploded, uh, popped up. Um, who knows, it may not be the problem, but for the sake of a couple of quid and taking a couple of screws out to take the casing off and taking the circuit board off, uh, it might just work.
and then you've got a perfectly serviceable telly again um, or the fault might lie somewhere else in which case you need diagnostic equipment there what you can plug in um, but then it's going to cost you so yeah so when I get the new one I'll again these prongs will be really long uh, just put the prongs into the into the holes now you may need when you're pushing it in if you find they're not going in you may need just to heat up um, where you took them out again because the solder might have dried and blocked the hole uh, so just put a little bit of heat on where you're going uh, or your soldering iron uh, until it pops through and then when you take the heat back off if there is a bit of solder on there the chances are it'll self solder it itself back in place so you don't even need to re-solder it if you like um, you can test continuity with a continuity tester so put it on the end of the prong and then onto the part of the circuit board where it should have made contact if you've got continuity you know that it's self um, soldered itself onto the circuit board then that's it plug in and test Ciao for now anyway I've checked these this one's a 2000 uh, if I focus in a 2700 uh, it's a funny U with an F 16 volt um, that's the spec that I need this one that I've got here is a that's a 1535 volt any good just undo it have a look inside yeah check these because they're normally the culprit nice and flat if any of them have pushed out at the top they're dead knackered sold an iron ebay replace them a couple of quid saves you chucking the item away job now yeah so i found an old um Basically a supply box for a computer, but the only one I can find that's anywhere near close is the right voltage. Um, this camera, man. Uh, anyway, it's the right voltage, 16 volt. So, for testing purposes only, I'm going to solder that in and see if the telly switch is on. Worst that can happen is this is going to pop because it's not the right resistance, but... Uh, at least if the telly comes on a bit and functions then I know it's worth then just going on eBay and getting the right one desolder this one and put the right one in it's worth a try right, ciao for now. right that's it literally two seconds to pop that on and as I said it has self soldered itself so yeah that blue one there is now ready to test so I'll just wire it up see if the telly comes on well do you know what guys the telly is on before what was happening is that orange light was blue when it was flashing and nothing was happening and now it's on there's a standby button at the side switch it off and there we go solid blue telly off switch it on and telly on happy days one telly fixed and that cost me the sacrifice of an old transformer happy days ciao for now